Hello and let's talk about auto sales in India. Over the past few months, there's been a buzz around the sales of cars, two-wheelers and three-wheelers increasing and this has been portrayed as a sign of the economy bouncing back. After all, if people are buying vehicles, things must be good, right? However, some numbers have recently come out that have raised doubts about these claims. Turns out the actual sales of the auto sector is not doing that well. Now, industrialist Rajiv Bajaj pointed this out and was hit by an avalanche of criticism from the right-wing media and its supporters, some of whom even accused him of insider trading. So what's really happening here? Are people actually buying more vehicles? And what does this mean? And what does the answer to this question mean for India's economy? We talked to senior journalist Anindya Chakravarti to find out. Thank you, Anindya, for joining us. So uh, over the past few weeks, we've sort of discussed how auto sales, they often come in our discussions as one key factor while measuring some of the, whether the economy is doing well or bad. And it's yeah. usually a fairly well accepted trend. So this time, October's numbers on the face of it seem to be an improvement. So what do you think of that? Yes, in fact, uh, one of the things that auto has been seen as, as a driver of various other sectors as well, because uh, that's, you know, internationally, if you look at it, American uh, capitalist model was often based on auto. So right. you give a Philip to the auto sector, then you have uh, various other things growing around it. Uh, hotels, for instance, right? And, uh, then uh, tourism, uh, sale of fuel, everything, tires, uh, car mechanics. So auto is something that people want. Of course, auto manufacturers exaggerate and say that we employ so many people, most of India as if they employ, which is not true. But nevertheless, there are many people are dependent on the auto sector as a whole. So every time the auto sector does well, uh, we need to take a look at it seriously because we did take a look at it look uh, very seriously when it was doing very badly last year. If you remember, it was at some five, six year low. Uh, right. uh, various uh, months we saw that the lowest since 2016. So last year was a very bad year for the auto companies. And this year, of course, uh, the sales numbers are very, very good. And uh, I'm talking about September and October, okay. the last two months that we have numbers for. Now here is a, of course, a, a health warning here. When uh, sales numbers are usually reported on the, in the beginning of the month, the second or third of November, you get sales numbers from most of the car and uh, two-wheeler manufacturers, and of course, truck and tractor manufacturers as well. And uh, business uh, news channels, e economy news channels, and also in general, journalists track it very closely, analysts track it very closely to get a sense of what is happening in terms of consumer sentiment. And this year, uh, despite the lockdown, despite COVID, uh, sales from companies, which is wholesale, basically factories pushing out to retail, right. has been a record. It's right. been, uh, it's not been seen. I mean, people were saying this is going to be worse than 2019. It's turned out to be much better than 2019, even better than 2018. So uh, therefore, definitely on the face of it, the wholesale numbers, production numbers are very, very encouraging for auto companies. But, uh, right. you on know, the, on never, the face of it is the key word. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we say on the face of it, there has to be some catch. There has to be a catch, right. So this context just wanted to bring you to something uh, Rajiv Bajaj said. Yeah. And yeah. this was a controversy, of course, at the end of last month, end of October and beginning of November. And Rajiv yeah. Bajaj said that he was quite disappointed with the sector, uh, with the yeah. performance of his company specifically. And yes. then there was an outburst from sections of the right-wing media establishment. People mm. were calling him out for illegal stuff. And uh, there yeah, was this exactly. uh, whole, this thing that the numbers are great. So why are you complaining? Uh, but so in this case, what exactly is the actual number we're talking about? So let's start with Rajiv Bajaj's own point. I think that it was, uh, he was very uh, particular. He meant sales from dealerships because he did quote what is called the FADA numbers. FADA is association of dealers. So he wasn't talking about what the wholesale production is, what he's pushing out from his factory. He was talking about what is being picked up from dealerships because right. you can make whatever you want, right? Because, you know, I, I remember that every year uh, I make food on festivals and it runs out. And sometimes I made ec make extra and that many people don't turn up. So how much food I make is not, a, <laughs> is not the correct gauge to decide whether my food is being eaten, right? So right. just because you're producing something doesn't mean it is being bought. That is the point that Rajiv Bajaj was trying to make. And I think that uh, we will, as we'll see, that he was essentially 
correct because just look at the data. It is true that within a few days, when I think 2nd of November, the data came out, there were, there were allegations of insider trading, trading that he misled the market by lying about the numbers. He knew about it on 26th of October that there have been record sales. And despite that, he was saying that he's disappointed. His, uh, but uh, when the actual sales numbers came out, they were record. So the, he must have tried to make some money out of it. Um, of course, as we know, Rajiv Bajaj has been pretty outspoken like his father. And therefore, uh, the establishment, which is in, uh, essentially a pro-government establishment and the right-wing establishment does not like him. So they're always out to catch out that uh, he's made a mistake or he's lying, right? In some cases, we saw some luminaries of the right-wing of the BJP firmament saying that effectively that he's, a, he's lying to right. blame Modi and create a fear psychosis amongst mm -hmm. people. And then the economy is really doing extremely well because look at it. <laughs> Car sales are so fantastic. Right. But uh, let's look at the dealership numbers and that's where FADA comes in, right? which is the dealership authority. So I'm going to take the uh, data uh, which is given by Cyan, which is the Auto Manufacturers Association. And they give you for uh, all the top auto manufacturers what has been produced and sent out to dealership. And we are going to compare that with FADA's data, which is not uh, the entire data. It covers to about 1,250 out of 1,460 odd RTOs where registration takes place. It leaves out two big states, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, and two uh, small states. Right. Uh, but you could still compare like to like, right? Apples to apples. So if uh, FADA's data cover covers 95% of the overall retail sales, because that's you know, most of the sales we know takes place in metro. So right. if it covers 95, 96%, that's true for this year as well. There would hardly be any difference. So let's just look at FADA's data for October. And we take first uh, cars because that is an interesting thing to look at. And in October, if we look at it, uh, car production or that which was pushed out from uh, the factories to retailers went up by 14%. This is a dramatic growth because it looks like this is fantastic. In a year with COVID, you've gone up 14% when really the demand should have not been there at all. Even yeah. if there was pent up demand, it shouldn't have been there. And this comes on the back of a 10% growth in the previous uh, month in September. So that itself is pretty good. Now let's look at FADA's data for retail as in sales from dealerships. And this is where it's interesting because in October, retail sales went down by 9%. That is the important point to see. So you look at it in uh, in the passenger vehicle segment. If we look at it, uh, the sales went down. If it was 100, it went down to 92, right? And uh, uh, to 91, actually, from 100 to 91, approximately. And if you look at uh, the, uh, the wholesale, then it actually went up from 100 to 140. Right. So last year as well, uh, the total numbers were not sold, about 90 or 93, 4, uh, you know, uh, percent of what was, being, what was pushed out was sold. This year, more has been pushed out and less has been sold. So exactly. we're seeing a clear, clear inventory buildup taking mm. place in dealerships. Right. Yes, of course, this year, November, Diwali was, is, was in the middle of November. Last year, I think it was at the end of October. So there's a difference. So you will see that difference. Maybe towards the end of October, dealers were uh, taking cars and keeping it with themselves because they expected a sharp rise in. Right. Uh, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that it is not possible that when we get the November numbers, we will see that that inventory has been sold. But just going by the sales from factories, we cannot That's yet right. Right. decide that the economy is doing very well. And Rajiv Bajaj is telling a lie. So, Rajiv Bajaj, of course, is not cars. He is uh, in two wheelers, bikes, bikes and three wheelers. So let's look at two wheelers. In October, uh, two wheelers, which is bikes, mopeds, uh, and uh, uh, scooters, uh, the factory output, and which was sent out to dealers, went up by 17% this October, right? And that is what is the record sale number that we're seeing for Hero, for Bajaj, the two big players, and then Honda and all. Everyone has seen it. Big growth, 17% right. growth in right. chart. What is the change in retail sales? What is the change in dealership sales? Well, it's gone down by 27%, Prashant. Wow. 
<laughs> so it is down by 27%. So we are seeing that whatever inventory was there in October, the, uh, they could not sell them. The dealers could not sell them. Their sales have gone down. Yes, they have built up inventory. Mm -hmm. Will that inventory be cleared? Has it been cleared by Diwali? We don't know. We don't have that information yet. Right. We'll only get to know, maybe we'll get to know in a couple of days, the mid-month right. mid mid review, someone mm -hmm. will be able to tell us. Mm -hmm. So Rajiv Bajaj was saying exactly the correct thing. He had said two things. One is that the dealership information pipeline tells us that people are not buying what we are producing. Secondly, in the lower segment, in the 100cc segment, I hope that is lower. I know nothing about bikes. Pran, do you know anything about it? Oh, no, no, no. Worst <laughs> no. person to ask about the auto sector. <laughs> yeah. I know the numbers, but I can't drive, sadly. Right. But the point is that I think the 100 cc, yeah, I know. I think there are 300, 350 cc, which are the pickup bikes. So the 100 cc segment, which is what the poorer people buy, uh, that has not been, that hasn't done well. That is what Rajiv Bajaj was saying. And uh, of course, uh, we've discussed this in the past as well, Prashant, because people will buy uh, things for personal transport. And we even e even cutting into their savings and actually at the risk of taking huge loans because that's the security. I mean, that's, that's what the pandemic has done. It basically brought it down to a situation where you have to take private transport. Exactly. And we see that being mirrored when it comes to three-wheelers, right? Mm -hmm. And that is interesting because three-wheeler production, again, mainly... Bajaj Auto here, and I think there are a few others. Uh, three wheelers, you look at it, both factory and retail have gone down sharply. So in factory output, we are seeing a 61% decline. And in retail sales, we are seeing a 65% decline. So if 100 three wheelers were being made in October 2019, uh, we only 30, uh, 30 odd. Uh, uh, what did I say? I said about a 60% decline, right? 61%. So about 38 odd are being, 38, 39 odd are being made, three wheelers were made in October. And uh, if 100 was sold, only 35 were sold in October 2020. Absolutely. Clearly, there is no demand for three wheelers because yeah. no one is taking public transport. Exactly. We're hearing similar stories from Maruti, for instance. Maruti mm -hmm. makes a, a few, uh, I think, uh, specific models, which is aimed at that entire you know, radio cab, the cab segment, Ola, right. Uber Ola Uber segment, right? Guys, right? Mm -hmm. And they are worried they're not being going to be able to sell them. So they're right. trying to work out some way to sell them mm -hmm. in some other method uh, to be able to continue to uh, produce and sell those cars. So right. that's an, that, and also give discounts. So clearly, we're seeing a decline in public transport. So you will see uh, cars and scooters being bought more. Right. And bikes being bought. But that obviously does not tell you much about the economy, Prashant. Precisely. Because Absolutely. So we're pretty much in a situation where you're kind of saying that at least the sections of the right wing, that because we have a lot of rice and grain in our go-downs, people are not really hungry in India anymore. Something on those lines, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. You hit the nail on there. That's a great analogy. Exactly. Yeah. And also, uh, one has to remember that historically, we've taken the auto sector's growth independently of the growth of... Uh, the public transport, right? Absolutely. So people have switched away from public transport as they got wealthier. So, I mean, even with all the cars and cars in this country, we sell about five odd lakh cars a month. <laughs> I mean, it's not really setting the world on fire. 60 right. odd lakh cars a year is right. not really dramatically high. I, mean, right. I, I guess it's lesser in these months, it's higher usually. But um, uh, so, the, it's still a very small population, which are car owners. Many have more than one car in uh, metros. And uh, therefore, that was always a sign of affluence, of, of growing market of the affluent people. But now that is not true anymore. And that is the point to keep in mind that right. if the auto sector rises, it is at the cost of something else because people are using their savings to buy uh, these cars or taking loans to buy these cars because they, they're scared. They can't go out right. in public Absolutely. transport anymore. Absolutely. And in the absence of any real uh, policies as far as investment in public transport, large-scale investment is concerned, and especially yeah. keeping in mind this pandemic, there's no re it really actually makes the situation worse for people from the lower middle class and Absolutely. for the poorer sections as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
in fact uh, many people from the lower middle class would have to uh, i would have thought would have had to buy cheaper bikes mopeds and scooters and if that has not picked up that tells you that the situation is really grim when it comes to employment or the fact that they're not be able to go to places to work anymore uh, so that is a crucial thing to look at and uh, uh, of course one has to wait for the november data frankly because diwali is here and maybe only then we'll know what the retail sales is all about but as of now retail sales are lower than last year and that itself was very bad because retail sales last year were also lower compared to 2015 16 which means that it was on a downward trend and not higher right so it's like a it's a double whammy because retail sales are not only yes. lower they are lower at a time when they should ideally have been higher even yes, exactly. what whatever yeah. social disturbance it caused right absolutely yeah. right thank you so much on india for talking to us thanks a lot prashant That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from India and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click.